o'er the far famed Kerry Mountains. I met with Captain Farrell and his money he was counting. I first produced me pistol and I then produced me rapier. Say, stand and deliver, for you are a bold deceiver, mushering the blue and Whiskey. One definition is that it is, it is an alcoholic spirit produced by fermenting barley, water and yeast. These ingredients are boiled and the steam is captured and condensed. This is the basis of whiskey. However, in the first written record of whiskey in 1494, the Celtic people referred to it as Beatha, the water of life. We are at the home of John and Betty Loftus on the Atherton Lay Tableland in northern Queensland. John is a well-known collector and connoisseur of single malt whisky. I'm going to talk to him about his passion. Hello John. Hello Diane. Welcome to North Queensland. Thank you. Now, for, th for those who know absolutely nothing about whisky, let's begin with the basics. What is single malt whiskey, John? Single malt whiskey means that the whiskey comes from one distillery and one distillery only. What is a blended whiskey? Blended whiskey is an amalgamation of several different kinds of single malt whiskey, all blended together to make a specific whiskey as a Johnny Walker. That is a blended whiskey. It's an amalgamation of different whiskies. I understand that single malt comes from five or six regions of Scotland. Yes, there's actually six. The six are Speyside, Highland, Ireland, Isla, Lowland and Campbelltown. Do these regions have their own unique characteristics? Of course they do, yes. Whiskey is always influenced by its surroundings and where it was in the Highlands or Lowlands, wherever it is. They do have their own unique characteristics. Do you have a particular favourite out of these regions and how would you describe it? Well, my particular favourite is Isla. I'm an Isla man. I love the smokiness and the peat and the brine. Uh, it's a beautiful island. I've been there many times and I love their whiskies. And my favourite whisky is Lafrague. This is a bottle of Lafrague. In my opinion, the best whisky that's produced in Scotland. I simply love it. It's an Isla whisky. The distillery is right on the seashore and it's influenced by salt and brine, sea breezes. The water's beautiful water comes down over heather and bog, limestone. And all round, I would say this is the best whisky produced in Scotland, as I said before. It's got so many characteristics. You can smell it, in, you can taste it in the nose. Antiseptic, salt, it's got everything as is whisky. It's got many, many devotees the world over. In fact, there's a club called the Friends of Lafrague. Highly recommended to sip on a cold winter's night. A beautiful, beautiful single malt whisky. This is such a wonderful collection, John. And it's amazing. Would you show it to us? Please? Yes, of course I would. I'll, we'll get up and follow me around and I'll show you what's what. Right. Basically, I save and collect single malt whiskies. These two top shelves consist of one bottle for every working distillery in Scotland. In other words, every distillery there's a bottle for from every distillery. From here to the floor are what's called mystery malt. They're all single malt whiskies, but they're bottled by various bottlers, large uh, whisky retailers who tend to buy casks of whisky and bottle them all and they put their own name on. They are not allowed to use the distillery name. I collect these and do a lot of research to find out what actual distillery they come from and when I do I pick one up and I find out that, for instance this Eagle of Spey mm. is a Glen Farkless. Good heavens and how did you discover that? Well through sheer Persistence on eBay and just simply researching, uh -huh. and, and I find out that's a, a Glen Farkless. Right. And that's the idea of all these. I try to find out where they come from and who bottled them. Mm. This must be a, such a rare collection. 
How long did it take you to collect it, John? And is every bottle a single malt? Well, I've been collecting this specific collection now. It's taken me approximately seven years. Mm -hmm. The second collection, but this one has taken about seven years. And yes, every every bottle is a single malt. I don't have any single any blended whiskey at all. Mm -hmm. They're all single malt whiskey. <laughs> Now, some bottles say, like this one, no chill filtration. What does that mean? Well, that means that normally whiskey, as it comes out of the bottle bit prior to bottling, is called chill filtered. In other words, it goes through a filter, mm -hmm. and the filter picks up any bits of wood or any sediment or anything uh, in, in the bottle itself that's been in, in maturing for several years. But when it's non-chill filtered as this is, it means straight out, so you're liable to, one would surprise a bit of wood or oh. a chip or a bit of sediment, but that's what it means on chill filtered. Right. It's come straight out of the bottle into the bottle. Huh. Single malts are matured in in um, in wooden casks or barrels. Why is that? All whiskies, by law, have to be matured in wooden casks. That's the law. They have to be in the wooden cask for a minimum of three years. Now, fortunately, the Americans, such as uh, Jack Daniels and Cougar and Jim Beam, they make their whisky in oak barrels also. But for some foolish reason, they only use the bottles for one year. And the canny Scots buy all these beautiful American oak bottles and bring them back to Scotland. The Coopers remake the bottles and they put our whisky in. And often when you see bourbon casks, it mentions on the whisky because the whisky in the, the Scots whisky in the bottle is influenced by the American bourbon. So they're all matured, mostly now, in American oak. And what does it mean when a whiskey, a single malt whiskey, is quarter casked? Well, what it means actually, in fact I've got a good example here, just a minute, yes here. Oh yeah. This is an afraid quarter cask. What it means is, it's taken out of the hogshead barrel, mm -hmm. and it's put into a smaller barrel, for a, a, an indefinite number of years, you know, maybe three, four years. And that little, and that small bottle might have held something like sherry or something, and it influences the Lafrig. So it's double barrel, in other words. So it turns out very nice, and that's an excellent, an excellent drop of whiskey. John, what are all these whiskies here? Well, these are all my tasters. People were constantly asking, what, what does this taste like, what does that taste like? So I decided to get another bottle of whiskey from every working distillery, and these are them. So I can offer you a taste of any whiskey that's produced in Scotland at the moment. They come up here, and along here, and all along here. And that's where the collection ends, of my tasters. John, what's in this corner? Well, this corner consists of the cream de la creme of my collection. They consist of um, single malt whiskies from distilleries that's been abandoned, mothballed and demolished. Some of them are very, very rare. The majority of these are all over 20, 25, 26 years old. Some of them even older. These particular whiskies, being mothballed and abandoned, are so rare. Do you ever get the opportunity to sample them? Well, over the years, I have tasted the majority of the whiskies, but relatively in this last few years, I have not because of the expense. But I am trying to get together a collection of mothballed and abandoned whiskies down here. I've got maybe seven or eight at the moment. Uh, this one, for example, was given to me by a good friend in New Zealand. Would you like a taste? Oh. It's an old whiskey. It's 19... Uh, 1978 vintage. Yes, yes. Would you like a drink? Oh, I'd love, John. Slantha. I understand this is, an, this is now, we're tasting an extremely rare whiskey. Yes, it is indeed, Diane. This is a Glenalbin uh, going on 30 odd years old. The distillery has been closed for several years now and it's getting harder and harder to source. But it's a beautiful drop of whiskey, as I'm sure you'll enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. 
I'm not a whiskey drinker, but this ain't half bad. Thank you for watching part one. We'll see you in part two. Cheers. <laughs>